Hey TVC kids, welcome to part two of The Squire and the Scroll. It's one of my favorite fun books to read to you guys. But hey, if you missed yesterday's post, go ahead back and look at the first part of the book so that you haven't missed anything. But just a short recap would be, there is a kingdom and it is governed by a king and a queen and a princess. And there is the lantern of purest light. And it has been stolen. The lantern of light has been stolen by the enemy. And so he's brought in his last final knight, who has a squire, which is his helper, right? And they are going on an adventure to try to rescue the lantern of purest light. And the squire has been brought up by his mom and dad who are just so awesome, but they've given him some rules to live by and it's called the scroll. And there's five laws on that. And the first one was to listen. And the second one you're about to hear. So he was listening to things that keep his part pure and they found some wool and they were going through a forest and they were hearing evil sounds and they put the wool in their ears. So who saved the day? Was it the knight? No. Nope. Was it the squire? You got it kids stepped up and saved the day. So here's what happens next in the story. After some time, the knight and the squire came to a great hill, too steep for the horses to climb, but there was a brightly lit tunnel to the other side. A silver shield lay at the entrance to the passageway. So just like they found a bag of wool, now they've found a shield. And the knight handed it to his squire, thinking it might prove helpful to the boy of less experience than himself. The knight walked his horse slowly into the passageway, wary of evil doing, but he was immediately drawn to the walls of the tunnel that were encrusted with millions of precious gems. The boy also saw the gems, but among them, carved in the stone walls, were evil images and frightening beings that scared them from, they were unnatural faces. In his horror, the boy remembered the second rule on his scroll that simply said, let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze before you. Without a second thought, the boy guarded his face with the shield. The knight, enamored with the precious stones, was already talking of plans to take some home to the king. But sir, whispered the squire, do you not see the evil carved all around the beautiful stones? The knight looked at the squire behind him and behind his shield, then at the wall. What? Oh, those. You are more innocent than I had thought. I have seen all these things before in battle and worse. Are you afraid? Not afraid, sir, said the squire, but wary. He answered very wisely. And begging your pardon, sir, you ought to be as well. For the scroll says, so here's the picture. And the young squire puts the shield up to protect his eyes so he's not seeing those evil faces, right? Did you guys see the evil faces when we got in? Take a minute, see if you could spot them. Don't get distracted by the jewels. See if you could spot the evil. So the squire says, for the scroll says, silence, shouted the knight, who usually spoke kindly to the boy. You are only a squire. I have not become a knight because of any scroll. Oh no. With that, the knight reached up to pluck a gem from the tunnel wall, and suddenly the tunnel was plunged into darkness. The squire's horse was startled and ran. The young man saw with surprise that through his shield, he could see the tunnel as if it were daylight. The squire turned to look back upon the knight and fought to stop his horse, but to no avail. So here's the squire the knight, right? He was not very kind to the squire. And the squire saying, don't you think we should watch out for that evil? And the knight's like, oh, I'm braver than that. Just go. And it became dark. And then the squire could see because he held up that shield. Remember that shield they just found that was left for him? When the horse raced into the light at the other end of the hill, the opening in the mountain closed up into a wall of stone. 
the knight and his horse were lost. The squire jumped off his horse breathlessly and beat his fist against the rock. Open, open, he cried, but the doorway did not reappear. Finally, the boy, he collapsed, grieving the loss of his master. Here's a picture of the rock wall. See, he, they can't get out. The knight and his horse are trapped inside that tunnel with all the jewels, but all the evil faces around them. Then the squire noticed again the scroll in his belt and he grasped it tightly. The scroll has led me safely thus far. I believe it will lead me even further. With great faith, he straightened up his back and went forward, his mind made up. He had settled in his heart that he would do his very best to complete the quest and rescue the lantern. Even if his own life were required, he would complete it for the sake of the kingdom and for the honor of his master, the knight. So here he is, he grasps his, his scroll, right? He doesn't say, I can do it because I'm strong enough, because he doesn't, does he? He's a young boy, he's not strong enough. He doesn't have the strength or the power or the might or experience to do it. What's he trusting? He's trusting the scroll. And last week, or last yesterday, we talked about that as the scroll being like our Bible, right? If we trust in the word of God, we can also get through many, many hard things, all right? So you should receive um, the scroll papers I sent to you. And so yesterday we talked about starting to fill these out and turn it into your very own scroll, right? And so number two is let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze before you. Don't let yourself get distracted by the things of the world. Focus on what God has for you. You know, we've talked about that a lot, the path that God has for you. And we get distracted and get to the left or the right, but we could always come back to God, right? He's always waiting there for us to come back. But what if we just kept our eyes on him and didn't get distracted? That night sure got distracted, didn't he? He got distracted by the jewels, the wealth, and he didn't even see the evil. He didn't even care about the evil. And so we have to guard our hearts, guard our eyes, so that we do not get distracted by evil. And so your question for today is, list good things you see that keep you moving on God's path. What are some things that keep you moving straight, that keep you moving on God's path? Think about those, either write them down, draw a picture. Remember, parents, if you're listening, spelling never counts in TBC Kids, so they can write it however they want to write it. It's for them to remember. But think about some good things that keep you on God's path.